Hey guys, it's Ann. We're going to take a look in on blue today, my 55 gallon worm bin that I run in a wedge style system. I'm going to show you how I can manage to harvest some of the castings every time I come in here by keeping it into three different sections. So uh, I can't remember who it was that said it, but begin with the end in mind. And I would like to have a steady stream of castings every time that I come down here. So it does take a little bit of prep work, about six months, but that is how I manage to do it. What is your goals for your bins? Is your goal to uh, just eat food and, or have them eat food and you know, you'll get castings when you get them? Or do you want to get them on a regular basis or are you just doing it for the worms? Uh, put your comments below. Last time that we did this uh, check-in here, we did harvest about five gallons of castings out of this bin so that we could move everything over. I had been using this bin to basically dry out the castings from other bins, which was stopping this bin from having any progress. So what we did was we took out five gallons of castings, uh, I believe is 19 liters, and we moved everything down. Now there is a piece of tape right here that shows you where we moved everything to. And this part is part number one. So this part is what is basically finished and it is sort of uh, maturing and whatnot. So this part of the bin here doesn't look a whole lot different than this part. But the truth is they're about two or three months difference in the age of the castings. Now from here over, there's basically no worms in here. And from here this way, all the way to my newfound uh, indicator, is, you know, probably still has probably, I don't know, a couple hundred worms in here maybe. I'm not seeing any as I dig down deep. Well, yes, yes I do, hello. So basically this part here is maturing and they're finishing up all the little bits and even maybe a pumpkin seed or growing me a pumpkin plant. So this part is done. This is where I harvest over here from this piece of tape over. And this part is just slowly maturing and getting to a moisture the worms don't want to be in and also the worms that are there are finishing up any little tidbits. Okay, let me move you over and we'll talk about the part of the bin that is the most interesting with all the worms and all the food. Hang on, I'll move you right over. Okay, oops, looks like they ate my indicator. How dare you? Well, I guess it's edible, that way you know. So, we're going to leave that there just so I don't get lost. So let's look and take off the tarp here. It's been about three weeks since we looked in here. We had put about eight to ten gallons of bedding in here and a gallon of food that did consist of tomatoes and bananas. So we were able to expand this whole area here to be a live feeding area for the approximately 20 pounds of worms so that they would have much more room to run amok. And you'll see here, they have been running amok. Look at that. That's what's sitting on top, and that's pure castings. Isn't that pretty? So as I'm working through here, please put your comments below if you have any thoughts um, on this system, any questions about my worm farming or the worms. Um, as I'm just going to keep yammering on as I uh, am working through here, but we're going to start evaluating this part here and look and see what we've got for worms and for castings. So there's probably about 20 pounds of my blue worm red wiggler mix. And with having that tarp on here, it is a really nice moisture for the worms. Obviously this is not going to be ready to harvest anytime soon because it is very, very wet. But it takes about six months to get to the point where I can harvest every time I come down here and get, you know, I get probably one or two coffee cups full of castings every single week. You could of course wait until, you know, it was longer and get even more. But that's, that's my goal is to keep enough in the pipelines so that I can feed my bonsais and the rest of my tropical trees and during the summertime my hostas and vegetable garden. So this is pretty wet. <laughs> you can tell I'm getting, I'm getting muddy, muddy thumbs up. So let me just keep, I'm going to just keep moving along here and we'll just keep looking at what the worms have been doing. Looks like they got into that avocado. That's good. And then I see tomatoes, so we must be getting close to where the original feeding was from about three weeks ago. There was a surprise feeding or an accidental feeding about a week ago, 
where I had a piece of fruit go bad and it had to go someplace fast. So we'll get to that when we get to the far end. Um, we might see more worms than usual there. That avocado is still trying to tempt me, I see. Nope, already got enough. I'm having to reduce worm bins in order to have enough room for the tropicals. So now we're getting into the bedding, the fresh bedding from last time, and the tomatoes. So you can see that all this left is like almost like a little plasticky thing that is the uh, tomato skin. And that's kind of a slow food, whereas the normal part of the tomato is a fast food, the skin could possibly be around in here for a couple of months. So right now, at this time of the year, what are you feeding a lot of? Different people in different sections of the country have different food that's available to them. Uh, in my case, you know, this is the season where all my tomatoes and peppers are, are finishing up and I'm doing a lot of canning of salsa. So that's what I'm, you know, feeding my bin is a lot of the leftover garden stuff. And uh, so they're getting a lot of peppers and a lot of tomatoes and, and whatever else fits in. All right, so now we're going to go all the way to the end here. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to be able to move the wedge down still a little bit more. Uh, even though we did do a huge, huge feeding last time, it looks like they are, you know, they've got to the point where I still have room to move some stuff over. So that's good. Um, keeping everything, getting it built back up a little bit more now as I'm harvesting more castings. All right, we got to be getting close. Oh, well, huge. Look at that. Solid worms. Okay. Here's the piece of fruit we were talking about. And that was a melon that I bought that turned out to be moldy on the inside right when we bought it. So look at that. We just stuck that in the corner and that is right there. That is an entire ball of worms right there. Probably about a half a pound. You can tell there is a mix of the blue worms, the red worms, and the European night crawlers. And they are just loving this melon. Even though I was a little annoyed considering food prices right now that uh, $4 melon was uh, completely ruined before I ever got a piece of it. Let's get them some new bedding and some new food so when that melon goes away they'll have more. Alright, here we go. That's about another three gallons of bedding. Put that down there. Then I will put down whatever is in this. Looks to be avocado, onions, peppers. Okay. Bury that bread down there so that it stays nice and wet. These avocados are great. Oops, sticker. Sticker off of here. And then let's put the melon and all the worms right on back. Kind of distribute that evenly so they have some place to run to. Kind of move over some of the old food so that there's nothing food like sitting on top here too much. And then I'm going to top it off with another couple of gallons. And that should cover everything pretty good. Alright, well if you want to see more about the huge 55 gallon bin or the wedge system, I will put the playlist right over here. And of course YouTube thinks you're going to like that video right over there. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.